Hello there readers of Ballarat. My name's Jock Sarong and uh, I am the author of The Burning Island. I'm here to do some answers to your on reading questions. Um, I hope these are useful or helpful or in some way interesting. Uh, first of all, when and where do I read? I uh, tend to read mostly at the end of the day in bed. Um, I will read and read until I fall asleep. A little bit like eating Indian food, I think. I'll keep going until I have long since passed the point of physical discomfort, if the food's good enough. Um, if it's a great novel, I'll wind up asleep with it on my face. Um, I read magazines over breakfast, strictly over breakfast cereal at the kitchen table and nowhere else. It's a lifelong habit and I don't know why I do it, but I associate magazines with breakfast cereal. Um, and a lot of them have sort of dried milk on them. Yuck. Um, if I'm really feeling extravagant, I will read in the bath or even um, by the fire. But I think in both instances, it's such a luxury event that I get really carried away with getting it perfect. So. Um, with the bath, for instance, you've got to have a, a balancing plank of wood and a glass of red wine and um, a towel to keep your hands dry. And there's the risk of dropping the novel in the bath. Um, with the fire, the fire's got to be perfect. Um, the armchair's got to be perfect. You've got to have the room to yourself. Um, there's a lot going on. So although I love the notion of reading a novel in the bath or by the fire, in reality, um, I very rarely succeed on those fronts. Um, I'm a very obsessive person. I, I'm one of those people who can't walk on cracks. So um, I have a thing when I finish reading in any given session that um, I have to finish on the left hand or verso page of the book um, and preferably as high up the left hand page as I can. I don't know why that's the case. Um, it does have the inherent advantage that when you go back to the book, you know to start high up on the left hand page. But um, beyond that, I couldn't explain it to you. Um, the first book that I fell in love with as, well, probably not as an adult, but as a young person, was a book called The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever by Stephen Donaldson. And um, it's highly unlikely that you've heard of this book. But when I was a kid, I had a paper round out of the local newsagents and uh, they had a small book section. And I used to scour through the books while I was waiting to load up my bike. Um, there was this huge, beautiful hardcover. It's an, actually an omnibus of um, three volumes of this long series that Stephen Donaldson wrote. And I saved up the paper round money and bought it. And um, I think a lot of that had to do with being in love with this rather beautiful cover and the fact that it was a big hardback um, rather than knowing anything about what was in the book. But uh, they turned out to be really very, very compelling stories fantasy sort of science fiction I was trying to explain it to the kids the other day that um, it's the story of a modern leper who is not a nice man and is widely reviled and somehow his white gold wedding ring his wife has long since left him but his white gold wedding ring transports him into this other realm where he's a hero and uh, the books trace this very gradual personal transformation in Thomas Covenant and um, they're really rather wonderful in a strange kind of way. Um, what does reading mean to me? I think mostly reading is a chance to slow down and um, particularly now but always it's a chance to tune out of um, panic and negativity in the media. Um, it, it's escapism more than anything which is probably why I'm not really drawn to dystopias. Um, I like to read in the other direction if I can. Um, I like to marvel at the language and the ideas. Um, increasingly for me, I suppose, as a professional writer, it becomes professional and it becomes quite comparative. So I read um, to look at how other people are doing it. I, um, as you can probably tell from the view over my right shoulder, um, I like to read paper. I just love the physical um, artifact of a book and the smell of it and the heft of it in your hands. Um, so I'm not a tablet reader, although that would be a hell of a lot easier on planes back when we used to have planes. Um, I think reading also um, for me, because you're really looking at ants on a white sheet, um, I love the fact that it 
causes you to generate your own mental images and that those can only ever be entirely subjective and personal. And um, a film obviously doesn't do that. A film dictates the terms of the visual experience. A book allows you to create your own. Um, which is why that the process of adapting novels into films is always such a, an interesting and contentious thing because uh, when I think of my Gollum from Lord of the Rings, no doubt your Gollum looks completely different and the Gollum that was ultimately invented for the screen looks different again. Um, and it can really rile you up as a reader, but um, I like that process of imagining worlds um, purely in some obscure quarter of your brain. Um, my ideal reading experience, I think, is probably to be on a plane to a faraway place. I'm always amazed at how much of a book you can devour when you're on a plane. Um, the one that I remember being most incredible was about 20 or 25 years ago when I was working in the Western Desert with Aboriginal people. And we were um, camped out a long, long way from civilization. Uh, in extraordinary heat and um, the people I was traveling with had lit up the spin effects and there was fire all around us and I was lying under the shade of a tarpaulin covered in sweat and completely exhausted and demoralized and I was reading The Brothers Karamazov by Dostoevsky and the passage that I was reading was about a troika that was buried up to its axles in snow um, and the, the incredible <laughs> contrast of the two ideas um, has stuck with me ever since. Um, what have I been reading during lockdown? Um, I, I think there's, there's an interesting discussion to be had about the notion of um, reading when times are difficult and, and what you look for in your reading when times are difficult. Um, uh, around the same time in my life as the work in the desert, I, uh, I went through a pretty low patch and a friend gave me a copy of Siddhartha by Herman Hesse. Um, and, and it was amazingly therapeutic reading. It's only a small book, but um, it was amazingly therapeutic. Um, I love The Plague by Camus, but I wouldn't dream of reading it right now. It's just far too close to home. Um, but it was a beautiful human treatment of a crisis and... Uh, it was much more a book about people than it was a book about a plague. Um, there's hundreds and hundreds of books in my house and I can't remember what happens in most of them. But when I look at the spine of each one, I can usually identify where and when I bought the book and the circumstances in my life when I was reading it, um, which says something curious about books and their role in your life, that it might not necessarily be about the plot at all, but about your relationship to the thing and the story. Um, my lockdown reading, I'll take you through a little list and um, you might know some of these or have read them. Um, I read A Paragon by Colin McCann, which I think you can probably see over my shoulder. Um, there. Um, I read uh, The Rain Heron by Robbie Arnott, which is also just behind me there, which is a wonderful book by a young Tasmanian writer um, who I think has a very big future. I read The Silent Listener by Lynn Yoat, which is yet to come out. Um, it's a thriller and uh, I think it will have a pretty big reception. Uh, I read The Orchard Murders by Robert Gott. Um, again, that one's yet to come out, but it's as good as um, everything that Bob has written and possibly even better. Um, Stone Sky Gold Mountain by Mirandi Riro, who I'm talking to on podcast in a couple of weeks to launch my own novel. Uh, the Mother Fault by Kate Mil Mildenhall. I'm in the middle of that at the moment. And um, on the topic of dystopias, it skewers a lot of modern life and politics um, just brilliantly. Um, but it's also a really pacey thriller. Um, in a lot of ways, I think it does similar things to what I was trying to do in On the Java Ridge, um, and it does a lot of them a whole lot better. It's a great novel. Uh, I thought, because I read about writers always reading Murakami, I thought, God, I better read some Murakami so I know what they're all on about. Uh, so I read The Wind Up Bird Chronicle. Um, it was odd. I, I liked some of it. I found some of it quite perplexing. Um, but the more that I've read about Murakami and what he's on about, um, the more I reflect on that as a really interesting uh, reading experience. 
Um, it's very different. Uh, I read a book of Mark Lanigan lyrics because I love Mark Lanigan's music. Um, it's a little collection called I Am The Wolf and um, Lanigan's lyrics as somebody who suffered horribly for the rock and roll lifestyle. Um, his lyrics are very, very compelling. Um, and I'm trying to read Carlos Ruiz Zafon's um, The Shadow of the Wind in Spanish. Um, but uh, I can't honestly tell you I'm more than about five pages in because I have to read it alongside a Spanish dictionary and it is taking me forever. I really don't have a lot of idea what's going on in that book, but um, I am perversely proud of the fact that I'm trying to read it in Spanish. Um, how does writing a novel impact on my reading? Well, generally, um, as a novelist, you get sent books, which is lovely. And um, you get sent them for a few different reasons. Your publisher will send you books because they want you to read uh, the other writers who are in their stable and be familiar with their work. Um, people will send you books because, in the hope that you might comment on them on social media. And those are people who don't understand how little social media profile I truly have. Um, and people will send them to you uh, asking you to review them. So it means that um, you're being given books which you mightn't otherwise select in a bookshop. And that's a really positive thing, I think. I, um, before I was a published novelist, a lot of my reading was um, down very predictable paths and um, I needed, frankly, a shake-up. And, and um, people will give you a shake-up by sending you something that never occurred to you to read. Like a Pyragon, um, it's a book about the Middle East. It's a very big novel written in an unconventional way um, and probably not something I would have selected, but um, something I'm really grateful to have read. It, it really opened my eyes to technical things, um, but also to the human side of the Middle Eastern conflict. Um, I suppose as a novelist, you read to look for the strings and the sticky tape. You're trying to work out how certain things have been pulled off. Um, and some of the time you know instinctively that those devices, those maneuvers are not going to work in your own writing. But sometimes you look at them and you think, now that is a thing that I could do with my material. Um, this is obviously not as close to the bone as plagiarizing it, but it's more about thinking of the shape of the story and the methods that have been used and whether those are things that you could deploy. So um, a little bit like if an architect walks through your house, they might look at the way the ceiling joists have been done and thought, eh, that's interesting, I could, I could use that. Um, when I walk through a book, I am looking for such things. And, and sometimes it's good to try and switch that instinct off and just enjoy the ride, really. Um, I think when you're writing a novel, there's probably there's a number of phases and they also heavily influence the way that I read. So at the start of a novel, I'm reading for research and there's a lot of miles to cover and um, it puts a dent in my, my recreational reading. Um, then I start looking for laterals and parallels and um, analogies to what I'm writing. So I'll try and read obscure things or classics. Um, and then later on, you're just seeking escape from the whole project. So you back right off and just read for pure fun, which is obviously the best part of the cycle. Uh, a book that changed me as um, a reader and a writer, and in fact, I'll say as a person, is a book called Seven Tenths by James Hamilton Patterson, which is a book about the human psychological relationship to the sea. It's, um, it was written in 92. It's still 100% current. And... Um, it's really lyrical and, and very lovely. Um, I'd also say all the Russians. I just love reading Russian novels, um, despite the density and the melodrama and the troubles with translation. Um, authors whom I admire and why. Uh, I would again point to the Russians, I think. Everyone between about Gogol and all the way up to Solzhenitsyn. Um, I love Conrad and Poe. Um, I love reading Kate Grenville, um, Helen Garner. Um, I, I really love great evocations of Australia and Australians, um, as well as those weightier classics. Um, what's next for me in terms of writing? Well, I am releasing The Burning Island kind of as we speak, which is the second of three books about Bass Strait, and in particular about the Furneaux Islands in the eastern side of Bass Strait. So at present, um, I'm trying to write the third of those three books, and I'm uh, five drafts into it. 
there might be up to kind of a dozen drafts before I get it to where it needs to be. Um, after that, I, I suspect I will turn away from historical fiction. And, and similarly, a couple of years ago, I turned away from writing crime fiction. I, um, I guess I'm constantly looking to explore new territory. Um, but the other thing about you know, the great joy of, of being a novelist is that you're just in it for whatever story happens to grab you at the time. And I wouldn't even think of that in genre terms. I, I think of it purely in terms of that story and um, has it taken a hold of me and will it sustain me over a year or two of writing? Um, that's what really matters. So there you go, that's a little bit about my reading habits. Um, I hope that's been interesting to you and uh, I hope your reading is enjoyable and that it's getting through you, getting you through all of this um, difficulty and sadness and monotony. All the best to you and um, thanks for listening. Bye.